hello guys and welcome to when in halifax so this is my third video about atlantic immigration pilot program so on the first video um, i already discussed the overview of aipp so i already discussed how it works what are the requirements uh what are the things to uh things that you need to understand what are the things that you need to prepare so i'll post a link on the description below so that you can watch the overview and then i already discussed the first program of aipp which is the international graduates so if you want to learn more about the aipp international graduates i will post a, uh, a link on the description below as well but on this video on the third video of my atlantic immigration pilot program series we will focus our topic or discussion about the high skilled program and intermediate uh, skilled program we will differentiate these two and then we will understand what are their difference and what are their um, requirements or to qualify what are the things that you have so we will start we will start with high skilled program so when you say high skilled program it is very easy to remember if your job experience your job title is under noc zero noc level a noc level b you are automatic high skilled program so the, let's give an example of job description under level 0 and OC level 0. The job example is more on management job. So example is restaurant managers, mine managers, shore captains in fishing. When we say skill level A, these are the professional jobs. So the example is doctor, dentist architects and when you say level c uh, level b uh there are technical job wherein the example is chef plumbers electrician so if your job your job title is under uh, skill level zero a and b automatic your program and in a aipp or atlantic immigration pilot program is high skilled program so if you don't know how to get your NOC level, I'll show you quickly, guys, on how to get your NOC level. I'll post the link. Uh, I'll post a link on how to get your NOC. So this link, I'll post it in the description below. So if you are here, find your NOC. There will be uh, five different levels of NOC skill type 0 level a b c d and then go at the very bottom you will find this section so on this section guys uh filter item it's like a search bar so this is the place or the search bar that you will type your job description so on this this is the result section we're in divided into three column so NOC, the first column is the NOC number. The second column is the title. And the third column is the skill level or type. So let's say, for example, you are a registered nurse. Just type nurse. And then try to check the titles, the job titles, which one is related to you or applicable to you. So since you are a registered nurse back home, your NOC number is automatic 3212 and your skill level is A, right? So if you are not sure that this 3212 is your NOC, click the link, okay? And there will be a lead statement, example title, inclusion, and of course, there will be a list of duties, all right so this example lead test uh, uh example title so you are considered 3212 if your title is emergency care nurse intensive care, intensive care nurse nurse research nursing consultant clinical community health nurse these are the examples of noc 
3212. So let's go back to our presentation. Um, so if 3212 is skill level B, it means that I am in a high skill program. Actually, the answer is no. If you are a registered nurse, if you are a registered nurse, if your NOC, if your NOC is 30, 30, 12, your category or your program in, in Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program is not a high skill program, but your program will be in the intermediate skill program. Why? Because the intermediate skill program, they are two option, NOC level C and then nurses. So if your job description is under NOC level C, you, your uh, AIPP program is automatic intermediate skills. And there is also job specific for intermediate skill program, which is the industrial uh, butcher, long haul truck driver, food and beverage server. And then the option two, which is the nurses, nursing aid, home support worker, you are under intermediate skill program. So this is very important, guys. If you are trying to looking for a, jo a job offer, you should identify which program you belong. So if you are a registered nurse, automatic, you will be in the intermediate skilled program. If you are a doctor, if you are, if you are a dentist, you are NOC level A, automatic, you will be the high skilled program. So this is the difference between the two, the high skilled program and the intermediate skilled program so i hope guys um i able to explain this one if you are a little bit um if you don't understand it well please comment on the comment section now please uh just tell me uh just send me a message sir can you explain more about intermediate skill program because i it's not clear to me please uh, message us, send us a comment, send us a message so that I can know, I can assess myself if I'm able to explain it well. So let's go now to eligibility. So if you are applying for Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, uh, now you, that you know which program you belong if it, it's either you are from a high skill program or inter intermediate program even though they have different noc the eligibility is almost the same so when we are talking about work experience both program are requiring you in the last three years you must have at least 1000 560 hours of work experience in the last three years so if you are jobless right now and then you want to apply for permanent uh, for atlantic immigration pilot program it says here by definition in the last three years so if you are unemployed you don't have a job last year you are still eligible as long as you have 1,560 hours. So, and then don't count your hours where you were self-employed. Let's say, for example, the self-employed is you own the business. You own the company. You, you are the business owner. So, your experience are not counted. And these working hours can be inside or outside Canada. So if you have an experience, let's say you are an um, electrician in the Philippines and then you have five years in experience, you are currently employed, then you are eligible to apply. So what if now you are a electrician but you are jobless you are unemployed for almost 10 years the question now is are you eligible eligible to apply for aipp no you are not eligible because it says from the definition that 
in the last three years, you must have worked at least 1,560 hours. And then what if, this is another scenario, what if you are currently working? You're currently working, but uh, you're currently working, let's say, as a painter or let's say electrician. You currently work as an electrician, but you are just casual or you don't are not, you you are not permanent you don't have a permanent job so let's say you only have 1000 hours of experience then you are not qualified to apply because from the definition it's very very clear that you need 1560 hours in the last 3 years so in education, the requirement actually is high school diploma or Canadian secondary or high school. So you need to prove for, for if you are a foreign degree, if you finished your course in other country like in the Philippines, you need to provide the credential assessment report or the educational credential assessment or the ECA to prove what level of Canadian standard your education or your education level in Canadian um, uh, criteria. So anyway, let's go for proof of funds. I already discussed this in the last uh, video. The AIPP, the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, the proof of funds that are required always depend on the number of family. So for example, you are four members family. It means that you, your spouse, you, your two kids, you're considered as a four members, uh, four members. So now, what is or how much is my proof of funds? My proof of funds for AIPP is 5,885. So don't be confused with express entry because express entry has a different set of proof of fund for AIPP they have different set of proof of fund for both of them the difference is only the AIPP is much cheaper com not cheaper very low compared with the express entry so this is the number this is number if you are applying here in uh, under AIPP in your single your proof of funds is 3167 If you are five members, you are you, you are required to have proof of funds around 6675 So if we're talking about the language test, the language test actually is very, for me, it's very easy to get. It's very easy to achieve because what you need is CLB4. For, so, you need to take an IELTS or self-pay and make sure when you apply for Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, it is not expired. It's a, a li, at least or a less than two years old, your uh, IELTS result or self-pay result. And of course, show you meet the level of program requires. Again, CLB4 is the minimum, the requirement, the minimum requirement for this uh, language test so for me my advice again get the highest possible score but the good thing is the uh, the the requirement is very low so the CL, CL before for me it's very easy to achieve so let's discuss the next one is about oh that's the la the last the last slides but then uh this is the overview of the this is the overview of the two two remaining program the high skill program the intermediate skill program and the the other the, the the third program is the international graduate so if you want to know more about the international graduate i already posted it i will posted it in the description below but on this video i explained the high skill program in the intermediate skill program so if you want to know more about atlantic pilot program please tune in to our channel when in halifax because i'm trying i'm trying my best to create an atlantic immigration pilot program series so this is my third video um tune in um on our 
next video wherein we, we were going to discuss about finding a employer and finding a get uh, offer so that's it guys thank you very much and hope to see you again in our next video bye bye